The top story today, new developments in the push for made-in-Canada COVID vaccines. Michael was reporting earlier in the hour how researchers at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, are doing innovative work on two vaccine candidates, inhaled, being developed as boosters for people who have had two shots of mRNA vaccines. Human trials are just beginning. This is the first phase of it. But it is exciting to contemplate the potential, and we're going to do that today with the lead researcher, the leader of the human trial, and that is Professor Fiona Smale, who is a professor of infectious diseases and medical microbiology at MAC. She is in Hamilton, Ontario this morning. Professor Smale, welcome to the program today. Thank you very much, Heather. And I would like to begin with your explanation of, of the vaccine that you're going to be testing and its, and its differences. So number one, could you help us understand how it works and what it targets? The vaccine that we've manufactured at McMaster, rather than just having the one spike protein, has got three of the proteins of COVID-19. Uh, the spike protein, as well as a polymerase and a nuclear protein. And these other proteins are also very important in the immune response to uh, the vaccine. And we anticipate are more conserved. They stay the same uh, against variants of concern. So that's one of the important differences in the vaccine that we've manufactured. Okay, three proteins, not just the spike. The other key difference, and I'm going to bring in some video that you have supplied to us from McMaster, which shows us how this vaccine is delivered. No needle, not into the arm. It is inhaled. Can you explain what we're looking at in this, Professor? <sighs> So we're using a jet nebulizer that um, produces a very, very fine mist. The particles are so tiny that they go right down into the lung where we are um, able to generate an immune response which is local in the lung. It's mucosal immunity. And we believe this is much more robust immunity, much better immunity at protecting against respiratory infections like COVID. It's interesting as we keep looking at these pictures, I wasn't sure. Jet nebulizer is number one, the coolest phrase that we have used on the air this morning, I want you to know. But secondly, I was wondering whether this would be sprayed into the nose or inhaled like a puffer, and, and that's the way that, that you, you are delivering it. Uh, it's uh, We haven't as yet got it in the form of a puffer. Um, these jet nebulizers are often used in hospitals to deliver medications like um, salbutamol into the lung. So they're widely used, um, and the unique part of this is that it's a very tiny particle that goes all the way down, right down into the depths of the lung where it works. And as you said, it, the potential benefit, as you see it, a, a more robust response in the lungs where the, the infection occurs, but also I would imagine the fact that no needles are involved would be a big benefit too. Uh, yes, we, we anticipate that this, um, as, as it could be rolled out, would um, potentially avoid um, uh, an injection and, um, and offer a different way of administering a vaccine. So you're going to be trialing this, or you are now trialing this, as a booster. Now, why is that important, as a booster? Well, I think we've seen over the past 12 months that the mRNA vaccines and AstraZeneca vaccine have been very effective at getting us over this first hump of the uh, COVID um, pandemic. But as time's gone on with, of course, more, um, uh, more variants being identified, we realize we need to really look at second generation vaccines. And so unique vaccine products such as the trivalent one with the three proteins, as well as novel ways of administering it, are really, in our opinion, the, the future of where we should be heading for COVID vaccines. Would this be something, I don't know if I'm phrasing this correctly, that would have general application as a booster, or would you intend to target specific variants with this? 
I think what we're looking for is that this would be a general booster. Um, there's some good good factors associated with this vaccine, as I mentioned. The three proteins mean that it has a broader spectrum of activity and likely to be effective against many of the variants. And then when we immunize via the lung, we know we also get some nonspecific immune responses, what we call innate immunity. And that is likely to protect not only against the strains that we know, but new ones that evolve over time. You've done research in animals to this point and now moving to the human trial stage. At this first phase, 30 participants are involved, as I understand it. What do you investigate at this point? What are you looking for? Um, with any phase one study, the first goal is safety. So we want to ensure that administering this to those people who have had a mRNA vaccine series is safe. But as well, be, we'll be looking at immune responses in the lung and in the blood. And we uh, can really predict by measuring those immune responses how effective this type of vaccine would be in protecting against uh, COVID infection. What do you think its potential is, Professor? I, I think this um, really opens a, a, a new um, door on the type of vaccine initiatives that we can uh, really lead here in Canada. Um, this is uh, a, a new way of administering vaccines. We've already done some work on tuberculosis vaccines the same way. And so I think this really does give us um, really a, a, a new opportunity to really reimagine the vaccine world and um, explore these types of um, strategies as we move forward. Made in Canada strategies, made in Canada innovation. Yes. I think that's an important point to make. Obviously, we have been reiterating through the morning, these are the very earliest stages, phase one trial. Yes, and there yes. are many months and many things that can happen before we would get to the point that we are with Medicago today, for example, yes. coming out with phase three results. But put that aside for a moment. As you embark on this human trial stage of your research, what is the atmosphere in the in the lab? How are you feeling about all of this? Well, I, I've had 40 years of clinical infectious diseases, and I have to admit this is the most exciting um, um, moment of my professional life, being on the cusp of, um, of moving this study forward into human trials with the potential of really making a difference. Professor Smale, we'll be following along, too, with uh, considerable interest. I thank you for explaining it in a way that I got, and I'm sure people thank understood you. at home as well. I really appreciate it. And again, thank you for the time and for uh, sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. You're most welcome.